With our autonomous octocopter, we're preparing for an international competition, designing and testing custom components, participating in a global community of developers in the industry, and we're all still in high school. How did we get here? Back in the middle of 2018, I was looking for a robotics competition when I found the Student Unmanned Aerial Systems, a competition in Maryland where high school and college teams develop autonomous UAV that competes in various tasks such as autonomous waypoint navigation, image recognition, obstacle avoidance, and payload drop. So I got a few friends together and we started a new club, Amateur UAVs. At the time, we were a small group, but as we took on more members, the club started to gain traction. We were eager to get started, so we immediately began to design and construct a plane. We were on a tight budget and looking for a challenge, so we initially dismissed the possibility of a multi-rotor. Truthfully, this was a pretty big mistake. We are launching our plane, Kelly Zero. Full! <laughs> While many of us had previous RC experience, None of us had attempted anything of the scale we were hoping to accomplish. After more than a couple of failed attempts with the plane, we eventually decided to transition to a basic multicopter design. Our entire design principle has constantly been based on our extremely tight budget. This approach was initially unsuccessful, from cheap motors with bad bearings to a dangerously unstable 3D printed frame. Soon after, we began running into issues. Discouraged and irritated, our motivation vanished. After taking a short break and doing some research, we discovered the Holy Bro S500 and it was conveniently on a suspiciously good sale. We put our pride aside and bought it, and this is when we found out about PX4. And then for the first time ever, almost everything was going smoothly. Oh god. Well, somewhat. Damn it! And we have pretty stable liftoff. We've always preferred to use open source technologies as much as possible in our work. We came across drone code which seemed to be a full stack solution for autonomous drones while being fully open source. At the same time, we were also struggling to control our UAV properly with Autopilot, so we decided to give PX4 a shot. We are we taking off. off. Dang! PX4 enabled us to continue developing our small test platform. We simultaneously designed a large-scale multi-rotor. We chose to use a hexacopter as we would have extra motors for more payload capacity. After months of development, we finally had the design, but fabrication of the carbon fiber was well over our budget. Stuck in a trap, a well-timed donation of a coaxial quadcopter from a production company to the school's engineering department allowed us to move on with development. After spending several days inventorying and transporting parts, we turned our focus to preparing this drone for the competition. Our challenge was to accommodate many of our electronics and mechanisms onto a filming drone, all while spending as little money as possible. We converted it to an octocopter for greater efficiency and started making other modifications to get the frame ready for the competition. Some scrap plywood and laser cutting resulted in our temporary electronics bay, holding a Jetson Nano, the CUAV V5 Plus autopilot, and two GPS receivers. A winch system and an antenna were attached to the arms, along with our main camera. Our new multi-rotor, named Macron, was our first real success as a club.
Since PX4 is incredibly reliable and easy to use out of the box, any problems with the way Macron flew were solely due to mechanical issues or imperfect PID values. This allowed our team to isolate and systematically alter specific variables that could cause certain problems, effectively improving the way Macron flew. We've benefited immensely from the vibrant and active PX4 community over the years. Having an accessible, friendly online community has allowed us to gain industry knowledge and connections, while also providing a direct line of support for testing and improving the PX4 flight stack. Because of PX4's free and open source nature, we've been able to both benefit from the work of other volunteers, while also giving back and contributing our own improvements. Okay, ready. We're ready. Right now, we're still working hard to prepare for the 2021 SUAS competition. Although it was cancelled this year, we've dedicated more time to developing the drone in both hardware and software. Just recently, we redesigned our winch system after testing several designs and it is now capable of dropping payloads. Using a prototype driver system, we were finally able to control the drop mechanism in the descent of the payload. Sorta. Of. Although the driver system was unrefined and needs some work, we hope to soon update it with less messy wiring and make the electronics more compact. Our onboard computer and Wi-Fi system have made significant progress, and we're working to improve those systems during the coming months. Advancements have been made in getting a stable Wi-Fi connection to the drone for relaying images. Recently, we've also made significant improvements to establish a live video and image feed between our drone's main camera and our ground station. An antenna tracker system is in the works as well, which uses gimbal-like controls to precisely point an antenna, directing a stable, strong Wi-Fi connection to Macron over long distances. In addition, we are planning to open source the antenna tracking control code as a PX4 module. We have also been working on our Mavis TK-based navigation system called Pilot. We are currently working on adding area survey and obstacle avoidance functionality. We are also working on integrating winch and unmanned ground vehicle control into pilot. There are also some major problems with Macron, such as inadequate battery life. The competition requires us to be flying for a minimum of 30 minutes, but Macron can only hover for 20. During a recent test flight, we lost track of time while hovering during a Wi-Fi link test and our batteries were not fully charged. Luckily, the damage was surprisingly minimal. We were able to rebuild Macron in two days, but battery life is still a concern with our old and worn batteries. We're planning to remove unnecessary weight from the frame and gradually replace our motors and batteries as soon as our budget permits. Since the spring of 2019, our club's goal has not changed, but has taken on a broader aspect. One aspect that we have recently incorporated into our club's goal is to give back to our community. Going forward, we have many things planned for the club. As part of our effort to embrace open source, we will be publishing parts of our code base as well as integrating some of the features we have developed into mainstream PX4, Mavlink, and Mavis DK. One project I'm looking forward to is something we call Beekeeper. It's an attempt to write a Mavlink and Mavis DK based drone swarm control system. If this works out, we hope to feature this in a demonstration or show later this year or next year. With our drone, we plan to spread knowledge about the industry. Currently, we are working on hosting technology conferences and drone shows, which hopefully will benefit our community. Along with these projects, we are also targeting kids younger than us to further their knowledge in aerial vehicles in order to spark their interest in this field through hosting hackathons and fairs. Hopefully, interested students will succeed us in our clubs as our high school journey comes to an end.
I think in the end, us having the opportunity to build such a strong relationship with the open source community is really what's going to keep us moving forward. Thank you to the PX4 community for helping us with our flight stack and to all of our generous sponsors for your contributions to our ambitious projects. The relationships we have developed, the help we've received, and the support we've been given from the open source community has really given us more reasons to continue. And that's what we're going to do.